With the New South Wales election coming up in March, uh, we're checking in with one of the Upper House candidates, Lyle Shelton, a name that'll be familiar to a number of our listeners. Lyle, welcome to Flow, and uh, tell us a bit about your background. Hey, thanks, Ricky. Um, yeah, look, I've been involved in the values space in terms of uh, family values, uh, Christian values in politics for a number of years, both at a lobbying advocacy level and also at minor party level. And um, I've uh, worked as a journalist, as a political lobbyist, and um, and putting my hand up as a candidate for the upcoming New South Wales uh, election on March 25. Now, your platform, I gather, relates to your involvement with the Family First Party, the revived Family First Party, which I had involvement with as a matter of disclosure some time ago, but it's been a, I'm not involved with this new iteration, but tell us what Family First stands for. Well, we'd certainly love to have you back, Ricky, but it uh, sounds like you've found, found a sweet spot there in the, in the Barossa. But um, Family First is a, a political party. It's been around for 20 years or so, uh, had been closed down for a number of years and recently revived. But it does stand for uh, the family, the idea of uh, privileging uh, family in public policy, motherhood, fatherhood, uh, raising children, things which the major parties and the other minor parties have essentially abandoned and uh, really... If we can restore strong families to our society, we can uh, have a strong nation. And uh, we've just got to get back to basics. Uh, Sadly, the major parties can't even define what a woman is, let alone what a family is. And uh, it's just confusion that's causing all sorts of um, trouble and chaos uh, in our society. And um, we think we've got an opportunity to remedy that through a political movement that uh, puts families first again in public policy. Well, and why have you had a, made a decision to have a dip at the New South Wales election? Uh, are there particular policy concerns from the uh, state coalition government or indeed the Labor opposition or other parties in the parliament that have said, well, look, that's enough. We're just going to have to put up uh, a party ticket because you're running as independents in the upper house. Yeah, I'm running as an independent because um, New South Wales electoral law requires a 16-month lead time to register a new party. And and Family First, in its rebirth um, iteration, has only been around for less than 12 months. So we we didn't have the 16-month window uh, that we uh, needed to get the party registered. So I'm running as a Family First back independent. But uh, our concerns are very much that the major parties have abandoned family. We're seeing this uh, gender fluid ideology taught in schools all the time. Uh, Parents are very concerned that their children are being brainwashed, not being taught how to read, write, and do arithmetic properly. Um, The governments are more interested in in, uh, indoctrinating them into queer theory and critical race theory, uh, anything but pride for Australia and for mainstream values. So that's, that's a central concern that's been abandoned by the political establishment where we want to try and get back to basics. We're concerned about the close down of uh, reliable and affordable electricity, again, uh, because of woke ideology, uh, when we don't have proper alternatives to replace the base load electricity that's being shut down. So on, on a social policy level, on an economic policy level, that's driving inflation and cost of living, uh, the major parties and the left-wing minor parties have certainly abandoned families, and that's why we think it's important that these values be on the ballot paper on March 25. Well, just uh, before we go into some of those policy topics you've raised, uh, some might be familiar with your involvement with the Christian Democrat Party, which I understand is now defunct. Are you running to sort of fill a void that's being left by the departure from Parliament of Fred Nile? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, for 40 years, there's been a Christian uh, slash family voice in the New South Wales Parliament. They've done some good over many years, but uh, in recent years, you know, it had declined and, and the party sadly um, imploded on itself. Last year, um, through an acrimonious court case, the New South Wales Supreme Court shut the party down and uh, it's no more. And uh, there's certainly um, a constituency out there that is looking for a strong, a strong voice that will represent a, a, a Christian worldview, a Judeo-Christian ethic, a family ethic in the parliament. And uh, I'm definitely seeking to uh, fill that void and encouraging people uh, not to lose hope that uh, we want to make sure those values are not lost uh, from the parliament and uh, we're putting those values on the ballot paper by running uh, this ticket that, uh, that I'm leading, albeit as an independent, but with the Family First uh, parties uh, backing. Now, you mentioned, amongst other topics on policy there, the um, gender-fluid ideology. Are you saying you've indicated that there's, this is happening in schools, there's a promotion of this ideology in schools? Just what, what evidence is there that that's happening in New South Wales? Totally. Uh, look, um, the we're at Purple Days, uh, the so-called Safe Schools Programme, Um, parents are bringing this forward uh, all the time. And and look, I have to give full credit to 
someone who is a um, is a fellow traveller politically, but in another political party, that's Mark Latham. He's done tremendous work in the parliament raising awareness of this. And um, it's something that I've been tracking for seven or eight years since my time as managing director of the Australian Christian Lobby. We were one of the first to bell the cat on this gender fluid ideology. And it's just spread like wildfire through uh, our primary and high schools, early education. We have things like drag queen story time now in public libraries. Um, there's just a relentless attempt to tell children that uh, their gender is not based on their biology. It's not based on their anatomy. It's based on uh, perhaps what their feelings, which can be very fickle, are. And it's, it's resulting in um, terrible dangers for young people. We're seeing an explosion of young people presenting at child gender clinics. It's gone up tenfold since 2014 from 200 children to over 2,000 children across the nation. Uh, so it, it's having... Uh, a result, and, that's, and, and that is that children are being uh, given inappropriate medical treatments, uh, hormones, puberty blockers, and in some extreme cases, even surgery on minors. That's irreversible. So it's a dangerous ideology. It's laced through the schools, and um, it, it needs to be taken out, along with things like critical race theory, which are teaching kids to hate Australia and not be proud of our heritage as a nation. Well, I notice uh, on your uh, social media activity, you're active on Twitter. You've also got some concerns about the Davos forum that's been going on recently. We've been tracking some of the claims by Al Gore there that there'll be one billion climate refugees by 2100. What do you make of predictions of his or even someone closer to home, Tim Flannery? Uh, We've got these spillways of dams spilling when he said this wouldn't happen in Australian history. Well, look, um, Davos very much concerns me because it's it's a bunch of uh, elites are trying to you know, shape the future for us in an undemocratic, unelected way. And uh, look, I've got no problem with uh, people you know, who are bankers and financiers and, and, and that getting together to have you know, conferences. But uh, this World Economic Forum seems to have a much more sinister agenda. It seeks to try and co-opt governments rather than work through democratic processes. And you, know, you mentioned Al Gore. Well, he said in you know, 2016 that we will have gone past the point of no return in terms of some alleged, you know, climate crisis. Well, here we are, you know, seven years later and we're all still here and uh, the oceans haven't risen and there's been no, you know, climate refugees, let alone the billion that he's predicting. So I think we've got to take, you know, a much more closer look at the claims being made by some of these elites and and what really is behind uh, their agendas and to make sure we as a country don't uh, cede our our sovereignty to, you know, globalist organisations. I'm all for global cooperation and for global trade that can bring prosperity, but not at the expense of the sovereignty of our nation and and not, um, you know, having solutions imposed upon us or or having our government, you know, march to the tune of uh, elites that fly in private jets uh, into Davos. Well, I notice uh, from the comment coverage in Davos, you've shared a bit of uh, the line of questioning from some rebel news journalists uh, of Greta Thunberg and the head of Pfizer. Uh, Where do you stand as a candidate or family first stand in terms of the vaccinations that were required under COVID-19 and indeed the measures taken in New South Wales? Look, um, we uh, at the time, uh, as Family First, and it was only just in its infancy as a rebirth party, um, said that vaccination should be a matter of choice. Um, Of course, we saw a lot of coercion in that space. Uh, We believe there should be a royal commission uh, set up to investigate what uh, our response to the pandemic was. And the more time passes uh, since the pandemic, the more we realise the claims that were made by uh, the big pharma, by our health advisors, uh, health officials, um, you know, haven't stood up to scrutiny. The lockdowns, you know, were they productive or counterproductive? Um, People being forced out of their jobs. All of these things uh, we need to look at to make sure we learn the lessons and that these things don't happen again. And, you know, I I was retweeting some of this Rebel News stuff uh, because, you know, these alternative news platforms are doing the job that mainstream media used to do. Sadly, mainstream media are now part of the cabal, they push the narrative and they don't question or scrutinise in the way that they used to. And, and so you've got these guys like um, Avi Yemeni and Ezra Levent running around with microphones on the fringes of Davos trying to buttonhole Pfizer executives or Greta Thunberg or Klaus Schwab uh, when they come out of meetings because they're, they're locked out of the event and it's the only way to get any questioning and reporting because the mainstream media are not doing their job. And, and, you know, it comes back to why Family First is here. The mainstream political parties are not doing their job. That's why alternative parties like Family First uh, have started. It's why we have alternative media, uh, because um, the establishment is letting us down.
Well, we know the feeling well here at Flow FM as a little regional broadcaster. And Lyle, just tell us lastly, uh, as people turn up to the polling booths, uh, even in the early voting and up to the March election in places like Corowa and over at Wentworth out in the regional areas, is there something you're offering or promising uh, for the benefit of people in those uh, further flung southern parts of New South Wales? Look, uh, my background um, before I got into sort of political advocacy was in rural journals and I used to write for the land newspaper, so I have a great affinity with the farming communities. And, um, you know, certainly uh, from Family First point of view, we want to see uh, family farms being able to flourish. Um, uh, we want to see regional communities um, looked after and supported and, and to make sure that, um, you know, we're not uh, city-centric in our approach. And, of course, uh, we believe that uh, families need to be strengthened. I know that's a core value of people in the uh, in the far-flung rural areas. Uh, they don't like what's being imposed from the big cities in terms of these crazy ideologies. And uh, Family First is going to be a, a bulwark of against this radical political correctness. So I hope that's something that will give comfort to your listeners in those um, wonderful places in the, in the west of the state. Lyle Shelton is an independent candidate running under the Family First banner in the Upper House of New South Wales. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lyle, and have a great day. Thanks so much, Ricky.